Welcome to NRBD TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the NRBD movement. We're all about helping women reconnect with their feminine power, their core, their essence, while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that seems like something you'd be interested in, definitely follow the channel. Follow me on all socials. Just look up Nicole Michelle, Mrs. Nicole Michelle, some variation of Nicole Michelle, and I will be there. I'm on TikTok. I'm on IG. I'm on YouTube, as you can see, and I'm on Facebook. So just look me up and join the conversation. Today is one of those conversations where I will be snatching edges. This is a continuation of part one, and I wasn't going to do a part two, but then you know, it's just one of those things. I felt like this would be a good segue into next week, which I will be telling you about what next week is about. So buckle up. I apologize for being late. But, you know, as a content creator, things always pop up at the last minute. So <laughs> I am on my husband's big old Mac, this big old thing. <laughs> I don't need my glasses. That's for sure. Um, that this is just a a difference. I, my eyes are like wide open right now because I'm on this big old Mac. I don't see how you all work on this all day. But uh, his equipment is a little bit better than mine. So I'm in his office doing this show. So let's buckle up and get this done. We are talking about five types of homeworkers today. Last week, last time in the first part, we talked about uh, five types of homeworkers and we'll go back over those if you want me to, I am prepared to go back over those just briefly, not the whole lesson, but just briefly. So thank you very much. You have an insight into being a content creator. Things pop up last minute and you got to roll with the punches. That's what it, what happens. The show must go on. <laughs> mic or no mic, different computer, whatever. Have you ever been at work and then you have to use someone else's station? It's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so um even though this is a better system by far it's just taking a bit a, a, a second here for me to get my eyes like so thank you you all for waiting patiently for me to start all right let's start this is going to be an edge snatcher today and why are we talking about home records this is not just for married women let me be clear and this is not just to ease insecure women. I always tell women, the moment that you step into a relationship that is meaningful, that can go somewhere, that is substantial, there will be people that take shots at it. And it's not always about you and it's not always about him, which while I will go into today, but this isn't just about insecure wives. Okay. <laughs> Just so we're clear. And I want all of you who are dating seriously to take this conversation seriously because you will be targets. And at the very end, for those of you who stick around to the very end, I will give you about five or six women that are at the top of the list that women will purposely go after your man. Okay. There is a type Oh, yeah, I will tell you at the very end, there are greetings, everybody. Greetings, 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 greetings. Type in the chat on YouTube side where you're from. I want to know. I'm in beautiful uh, Ohio today. There's not a cloud in the sky, y'all. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so just to be clear, we're not just talking about insecure women. Anybody who is married or in a serious relationship should actually listen to this. Also, we are not putting all the blame on men. Let me say that again. We're not, I'm sorry, the women. We're not putting all the blame on the women, as you will see as we work through it. Oh, shout out to Dallas. What's up? Lots of family. I got lots and lots and lots of family in Texas. So this is not just about um, taking shots at women and making them the only ones responsible. Shout out to Indiana, my neighbors. Shout out to D-Town. Uh, Chicago, Miss Chicago in the building. So this is not about taking shots at women. This is about understanding real life and how grimy the world has become. That's all this is, right? But I will be snatching edges. I will probably, no, I will lose subscribers and friends <laughs> after this one if I didn't lose them the first time. Shout out to VA in the building. Somebody's in Paris. All right. 
Okay, so why is this important? Because times have changed. Shout out to H-Town. I love Houston. Why is this important to talk about? Because times have changed. The world has changed. The world is more decadent. Shame is out of the window. People just don't care. People are just out for self. And people just are very, very selfish. Let's be clear. Home records can be male or female, just so you know. Those of you on the clubhouse side and ig please just join me on this side so you can see the visuals because they are going to be interesting home records can be male or female just so we're clear and couples break up that's why we talk about it because i hate seeing couples relationships damaged because there's one weak party or people are particularly aiming towards people in relationships because i'm also going to talk about the male home wreckers who target married women i'm going to talk about that towards the end families are torn apart children are torn apart the divorce rate i think across the board is like more than 50 percent. so it's getting a little bit better but not that much and then people are just flat out selfish people don't want to deal with consequences of their errors and then we live we just flat out live in a decadent society so Let's go back over this really, really quick. Part one overview is understanding the concept of home records. It is crucial for women who are striving to build and maintain marriages, not just traditional marriages, but marriages. And in this context, a home record is typically defined as a person who's blamed for the breakup of a marriage or family, particularly through engaging in an affair with one of the spouses. Here's a breakdown of the concept. Now, traditionally, the term was used to describe a woman who has a relationship with a married man, <clears throat> which can potentially or actually lead to marital discord and the breakdown of family unit. When they came up with this term, home records, to be fair, it was aimed at women. Shout out to South Florida. It was aimed at women, but I can assure you that home records are not just female. <laughs> but the term was origin originally meant for women. So I'll give you that. So let's go back over the other five really, really quick. The wannabe sugar baby. And these are women that, let me get my old notes from back in the day. Hold on. All right. So the wannabe sugar baby, she is, God bless her soul. She had a hard time growing up, right? And money was an issue. She has what I call financial psychosis. She was traumatized by the lack of and so she grows up, she realizes, oh, I'm pretty, men will pay to be around me, and so let me maximize that. Instead of looking at it like uh, being in a relationship uh, that leads to marriage and substantive and falling in love and things like that, this is not a part of her story, at least not right now. And she saw some ugly things growing up. So she's not in a rush to get married she doesn't prioritize marriage she's looking for the princess treatment and that could mean your husband and that doesn't necessarily mean she's trying to tear up your home or get down with your husband or make you hurt or anything like that this isn't personal this is all about her and her come up right she likes the excitement the exhilaration she doesn't really care who she hurts because she feels justified because of all of the things that she went through Growing up, she feels justified in what she's doing. So beating her up, calling her names, trolling her and all of these things really won't make a difference. It only incenses her ego that she could get someone else as upset as they are <laughs> by her actions. She absolutely is uh, not really going to be um, moved by your tears, by, oh, you're breaking up my family. That really is not her issue, although she might lose a little bit of sleep and not much. Um, she feels like, well, I didn't grow up with everything. So, you know, make do. <laughs> and um, she grew up with a lot of trauma, a lot of lack, no father figure. So she prowls for men who could give her gifts and who can spoil her. And ladies, those of you who have men who have a lot of resources, who have access to a lot of beautiful women, you, your husband will be a target. I'm not going to lie to you. Your husband will be a target. <clears throat> I'm not saying he will cheat. And I'm not saying all women around him are trying to cheat with him or take his resources. I'm just saying you're a queen. Watch the board. Okay. Queens watch the board. We watch the king. We watch the pawns. We watch the rooks. We watch everybody. That's what queens do. 
All right, so the feminist misandrist, this one right here is a sneaky one because you don't put this, you don't really expect this woman to really bother your husband, really. And to be honest with you, she's 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 interesting to men because she's a tease. This is the woman that's talking all this smack about men are from other planets, men don't love men. This is the ultimate tease. And she is purposely attracted well let me let me rephrase that she likes the attention she gets from me and let me just say that she is the loudest proponent of equality but she will utilize pretty privilege any possible time she can get it she is the biggest flirt but then will turn around and say that she has issues with men men can't love men this men that uh, they will create spaces for women and so you would never, ever, ever in a million years think, not this woman, not pro-feminist, the, the woman that she's convinced me she didn't like men. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't care if she says she only messes with women. I do not care. Do not sleep on this one. This one right here, she's fluid, okay? So she, she's getting it where she can. If any of you have watched How to Get Away with Murder, let me tell you, she is Annalise Keating to the T. This woman <laughs> embodies Annalise Keating to a T, and she's proud of it. I can't think of any um, anybody else off off the top of my head. Uh, uh, but this is this is the woman that you would never ever ever think that she would come for your man. Don't get lost in her rhetoric that she hates men or men are disgusting or women need to be with each other. Don't get lost in that, please don't. Don't sleep on her. In the office, she's the biggest flirt. If she realizes that men are attracted to her or certain men are attracted to her, she will benefit from that if she can. She sees harassment as anything. If it's someone that she can extract resources from or benefits from, then it's not sexual harassment. If, if it's someone that she cannot get benefits from, it is sexual harassment this is someone that had a rough upbringing probably some trauma as a little girl she's been violated and so she's a little bit bitter when it comes to men she likes men but from a long distance and she definitely loves the resources that they provide for her uh, she may not may or may not uh uh even like men so don't get caught up in her saying she doesn't like men and this one does not want your husband OK, she does not want your husband. But in the event that uh, she's around him in the workplace, she's going to be around him, even in church, y'all. And I'm going to hit on church in a minute. Um, she, she is going to he, be around your husband in his workplace. This is the main place where she sees him in the business world, corporate world. She's going to be all up in there because this is a go getter. This is a woman that prides herself on her success. So that's where she's, he is going to encounter this woman. So I don't want you to approach this situation like she wants my husband because that's not always the case. And in the event that, you know, he gets in a, an entanglement or something with this kind of woman, she doesn't want your husband. <laughs> typically I would say your, your marriage has a, a, a small chance of reconciliation or healing after he's messed with this woman, because in the event that he starts having feelings for her or actually gets, you know, real froggy and real sassy. And he actually thinks that he could have a future with her because the sex with this woman will be off the chain because she's so fluid. I mean, this is the woman that'll do threesome. She's going to take it in every hole. This, this is the woman that's off the charts. So a lot of men who haven't had a whole lot of freaky stuff will, will get totally open with this woman. And sometimes they come home, they get sloppy with their, with their cheating. And then he'll start talking smack his face will get totally hurt because this woman does not want him long term. And that's what he does not realize, but he will. He will realize that this woman, this was all fun, fun and games for her. She's not thinking about him like that. <laughs> Sorry for you, bro, but I do not want you to leave your wife. I do not want to keep you full time. And I knew that you were a cheater anyway. So I just slept with you to prove a point.
And that's what he will hear. And that's when he'll come back to you with his tail between his legs saying he's sorry. He doesn't want to break up the family and all of that good stuff. Right. So this lady is she's a beast, but she's not trying to tear up your home. It's really all about her. She's not really thinking past you or kids or anything at all. Let's see. Um. But she will, let's see, she's going to push the sexual button really hard and expect men to control themselves. This is the one that's walking around really, really um, uh, 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 very sexually suggestive. But she expects the man to keep his hands to himself. That's This is her. I can wear what I want and you better not touch me. That's her. This is her. This is her. This is her. The next one is the refugee, I call her the refugee she is flat out an opportunist this is your this is your your more sophisticated sugar babies your courtesans which i will be talking about next week um if this didn't snatch your edges next week will because no one else is schooling you about the mixed messages that you're getting and young women are complaining that older women are not telling them the game and telling them the truth and preparing them so let me prepare you next week will be about courtesans and kept women and all of these little little names that fancy names that they're getting sugar babies but this woman is an opportunist, and typically she's going to search out of her race for that opportunity. And that will be her target, is being from other races. Um, she has a rebellious streak in her. Um, she is she can be a grifter. Uh, she is going to be a very, very, very outspoken person for interracial dating, because that's where her come up will be. And if you look in the past of a lot of people, it's been a lot of, yeah, her too, Queen of the South. <laughs> I thought about her and I said, no, I'm not going to put her in the, in the slide. I'm not. <laughs> but you all can talk about who you want to in the chat on YouTube because I won't keep the chat up. So um, I don't want to call anybody specifically by name, but you all can do what you do in the chat. But uh, this one is... Um, this is a more sophisticated woman. And for those of you who are listening to me, who are maybe not, let me put it to you like this. No matter what your race is, it will be women of other races trying to get with you. So if your husband is black, she will be white or Latina. Or if your husband is white, she'll be black and Latina. Well, she'll be all races. And then if he's Latina, Latino, then she will be uh, Italian or, you know, some type of exotic or she'll be white. Whatever the case may be, her main target are men from, from uh, that are not in her race. That is her target. So, like I said, she's a more sophisticated sugar baby. Uh, all right. So, um, unlike sugar babies, they just want the money. This woman wants to infiltrate your culture, your race, your lifestyle and neighborhood. And in the first video, I think I taught, I told you about the time where I first moved to Atlanta, I was getting, you know, um, acclimated to the city and a girl that I had met, uh, in my apartment complex, uh, she said, well, you we, you and I need to hang out. And she specifically named a, a black club downtown. And this was in the underground. So, you know, it was a minute, <laughs> a minute ago. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be called dead in the underground now. But anyway, when I first got to Atlanta, it was still a little bit popular. It was like a couple of clubs down there. And so we went and boy, when I tell you, as soon as she got in that club, I could not find her. She had at least four or five dudes hanging off of her. <laughs> I didn't see her the rest of the time. <laughs> and she said, oh, oh, Nicole, you can go ahead by yourself. I'll be fine. I said, are you sure? And she was like, oh, no, no, I have a way home. And come to find out they ended up in a relationship. And I don't think it worked out, but that wasn't the point. The point was she needed me as her buddy to get in the club. Does that make sense, y'all? Y'all following me here? All right, so you will have women of other races who cling to you to get access to the men in your culture. I said what I said, you all know I'm telling the truth. 
you all know I'm telling the truth. I speak no lies on today. All right, so their familiar structure is, is going to be messed up. Their a, a familiar structure is not stable. So they kind of look side-eye at stable families. They don't really value stable families. Yeah, I was the wing girl, yeah. <laughs> they don't really value stable families like you think they do. They'll sell you on it. Oh, yeah, I'm big on family, I'm big on... They're really not because they're going to mess with your husband <laughs> if given the opportunity. These are the women that will go. I've seen them in galas where Tony and I went to a gala. <sighs> and let me just tell you, everyone else was dressed. I mean, it was cold outside. It was cold and rainy that night. And Tony and I went in and I had on this long red dress. I'm going to try to find that photo so you all can see me at the gala. Because I really don't take pictures of me out and about like that because I don't think about it. But I'll try to find that photo of me in, the, in my dress. <clears throat> but anyway, so um, so we're having a good time. And, and I was just looking around, just looking around. And some of the women, I promise you, look like they belonged on a corner. They did not belong. They didn't look like they belong in a gala with professional, professional people of the city. They, they look like they were there to pick up a man. I'm not going to lie. Um, th their dresses were really, really tight, really revealing. And you know what I tell you, ladies, about the rule of thumb when it comes to choosing attire? that is elegant versus trashy and slutty, you don't want more than two reveal spots. So if it's cleavage and arms, you don't want to do legs too. You know, if it's going to be your arms and your legs, then you don't want to do cleavage. So like a lot of the dresses were like super tight and then they were revealing. And then it, it was just, it was almost embarrassing that I felt that they should know better because these are women that were making, I'm pretty sure they were making goo gobs of money in the industry that they were in. So I'm like, you ought to know better. Uh, but no, <laughs> I don't think they were there for that. I knew exactly what they were there for. And you know what they were there for. So they are looking to uh, kind of boo-boo on conservative family values. Because anything, tr any, yes, definitely, definitely, Devin. They are looking to boo-boo on anything about family, anything about any uh, a traditional structure. They want to rip all of that out. If you come to them about culture, these are the people that will infiltrate that are super, super, super overly uh, interested in old money and, and, and high value men and men with money. They are looking to infiltrate these families, not to add value to the families, but to extract. And this is why the family will close rank on these women fast and in a hurry because of one, look how they showed up at simple events like that, which is like telltale sign, but also the, they don't, really value family and they're going to be super liberal but the families even if the man is somewhat socially liberal which is why he would be dating out in the first place even if he's socially liberal the family is conservative fisc fiscally conservative they are all about keeping money in the family. This is why people make fun of people in the south because they married the cousins and because they wanted to keep money in in the family. That's how deep that goes. And so when someone outside of the culture, outside an outsider, period, comes in, you can be, even be in the same race sometimes. These people will circle their wagons around their men, their sons, their husbands. They're like, who is this person? So a lot of families, they see you coming. They see these women coming. They're like, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, you can't have my son. Shout out to Miss, you know who? <laughs> I think she. Where, where, is, where was that? You wrote her name in the chat. Shout out to her because because I think she's hit another bag. Well, she's married. She's marrying, you know who's son. I said, whoa, look at her getting a second big old bag. All right, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> a lot of them have issues with their own race, and so they're looking to kind of get away from their own race and kind of set up 
uh, with a different race and kind of reinvent themselves. You know, I don't blame women for marrying up. As a matter of fact, I teach women how to marry up, but I teach you to do it fair and square. I teach you the way mothers have always taught daughters since the beginning of time. Marry as good as you can marry. It becomes tox toxic when you are only with the man for his resources. You're only with the man, not for marriage, not for family, not for all of these things. Diamond Nicole or oh. Diamond Carol. Okay. All right. Well, you're not um, with these men for that. Hold on. All right. You're not <clears throat> with these men for that reason. Hang on really quick. You're not with these women for that, not with these men for that reason, you are with them so that you can extract uh, resources from him. So it's one thing to say, hey, I'm looking for a husband that, um, you know, I want to live well and things like that. But it's another thing to approach it from a financial psychosis position to where he's got to make this kind of money. He's got to give me this quality of life. He's got to do, when you come from that place, that's when it becomes dangerous and toxic. And that's what I'm talking about. All right. So that is not good. And the next one is, oh, man. All right. I said I was going to snatch edges. I'm going to breeze through this one as quickly as possible. I apologize ahead of time if I offend anybody, but that is not my intentions. But I got to tell you, like it is, those of you who are married and those of you who are in serious relationships, you got to watch out for this one. Because unlike the feminist misandrist, this one might actually fall in love with your man. And he's around her for a lot of hours. This is the corporate diva, boss chick divas, right? They're very ambitious. They have libidos similar to men. And she will do every little freaky little thing because she has a high libido too. And this is a woman that finds it difficult to find a, a, a man in her peer group. So she is um, getting, getting in where she can fit in. A lot of men on her level are not really interested in the dynamic with her because... <sighs> She's an alpha chick. And a lot of men, when they reach a certain level of success, they're tired of pushing, pulling with women. They just want a woman that can get on his program, period. And so this woman is like, whatever. I work just as hard as you. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a shot caller. What it do? And he's like, um, no, thank you. <clears throat> but outside of the sex, they really can't connect. And she's a really good person to work with. I mean, you're talking about a go-getter. This is a woman that could get it done. And they're going to build a rapport because they're around each other all the time at the office. When she sees you coming, when she sees you coming, she's got a scowl, right? She's going to smile. <laughs> Hi, Miss Boot and Shoe. How are you doing? Let me get back to work. I'm so busy. It's almost like everything she says to you as the wife or the girlfriend or the fiance is kind of like talking down to you. And so you're like, did she say that to insult me? Or <laughs> you're kind of like rethinking everything she says to you. And trust me. She is. She is talking down to you. Um, she looks down on married women. She thinks, why on earth would any woman want to pass on an opportunity to earn her own money, to be financially free, call her own shots, um, make her own money, set the world on fire? Why would why she looks at marriage like being under the thumb of a man? So she looks down on women who actually value marriage, especially traditional women. To, to tell this woman that you're a housewife is like cursing at her. And so, yeah, everything she says is going to come with a condescending tint to it. Oh, you know, I couldn't imagine just being at home with children all day. You know, I, you know, my perfume is too expensive to be having babies, you know, spitting up on me all day. Oh, well, off to court, I have to go. I don't have time to, you know, I have so much work to do. I'm so valued. And what she's doing is trying to communicate her value, because her value as a woman is wrapped up in her career. That's where she receives her fulfillment, which is nothing wrong with that. It just gets toxic when down the road, she she is very judgmental of people who didn't choose her choices. So she actually does think she's better than the housewife in particularly. But here's a funny twist to it. A lot of them secretly admire, well, well that's a strong word. They secretly 
think about being a housewife and what it would mean to have a man taking care of you and doting on you. And so in their dreams and fantasies, they think about this, but reality, I don't know, maybe it was childhood. Maybe it's just their personality. It's just, they just cannot, um, <laughs> and they just cannot, not, 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 not see themselves dependent on a man 100%. You have to watch out for these women. Any woman that is super, super, well, marriage isn't any, isn't everything. And why are these women always talking about men? Watch out for her. That'll be the first one on her knees in front of your man. I, I'm not lying to you, ladies. You ask older women to give you the skinny. I'm telling you what it is. I've worked in corporate America, and I'm telling you, these women have a libido. They will sleep with every man in the office and keep it pushing. And, and really, they don't look at it as, well, they're going to think I'm a hoe. They don't look at it that way. They look at it, sex is a means to an end. We got it in. Let's keep it pushing. And so that's the same way they look at it with your husband. Your husband is in danger if he falls in love with her because this woman may or may not want him. <laughs> she might, <laughs> but, but chances are she doesn't. She just likes the fact that she can prove you wrong and prove that your man was a dog and prove that she has sexual power. She wants to know, this woman is all about power. And so with her, sex with your husband is about power. Can she pull him away from you? Can he get her, can he get, can she get him lying to you about being with her? That's power to her. Watch out for these women that say, marriage isn't anything. Oh, I couldn't be a house. These men, just always talking real, real sassy about men. Just just watch them. Watch them around your man. And, and if you're a wife and your husband does an awful lot of office work, I would be popping up randomly. Well, Nicole, you're teaching women to be insecure. Uh, I'm teaching you how to be a queen. And the queen is always watching the board, baby. Always. And that's why you pop up at your, your children's school. What, what are we talking about here? Pop-ups. Pop-ups, you have the time, especially if you're a traditional housewife, you have time on your hands. Um, make him some lunch and take it up there. You know, that's how you find out. Remember in the Tyler Perry movie when she went up to the to the office? That's how she found out. Well, that's how she confirmed it. And she kind of knew she was around, but that's how you that's how you you know you pop in and you do some pop-ups and things like that. Remember Betty Broderick? We talked about her, the married to the San Diego attorney. And he fell in love with the little paralegal <laughs> and she went in there for his birthday to take him to lunch and he was out with her. See, ladies, that's what I'm talking about. If by the time you get to the office, they have a full blown relationship, it's too late. That's why pop ups are always important. OK, pop ups, pop ups, pop ups. Um, Let's see here. Oh, this is another key point about corporate divas. He, if you if your man works in the uh, mailroom, if your husband is the UPS driver, if your husband is, you know, she she doesn't want him. She wants the boss. So if your husband is the boss, your husband's name is on the door. Your husband's name is on the letterhead on the, the office building. He wants she wants the boss the owner of the company. She wants as far up she can go. So if she's a paralegal, she wants the attorney. If you know what I mean, does that make sense? She is not looking for a man that's below her. Now she will screw the man that's below her. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> she will, but she doesn't want him. So don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. She doesn't want to keep him. Um, let's see. Oh, when you go to uh, professional galas, this is another thing I have to let you know about this woman right here. When you go to galas and things like that, yeah, uh, what movie is that from? That is called, it's with uh, Meredith Baxter. Oh, 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 I didn't mean to go that far up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't mean to go that far up. She is, uh, that movie is called, oh, it's with Meredith Baxter, y'all. Y'all remember that movie? I keep talking about it all the time. Oh, it's with Meredith and Michelle Johnson. 
It's about Betty Broderick. Just type in movies on Betty Broderick and it'll come up because they did a part one and part two excellent movies. They are like so good to watch y'all. And Dear John, or is it something John on Netflix? Dear John, yes. Dear John on Netflix is the more updated version of it, which was actually good too. But the old school versions with Meredith uh, Bur listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I, I kind of wish they let Betty out for real because he did her wrong. But anyway, when you go to galas with professional people, always pay attention to the women that hang around nothing but men. OK, so when you go to these galas and things like that, don't be the woman that is just surrounded by men. I know that's flattering and things like that. But women like me, we're on to you and we're like in the corner like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Us seasoned women, we know what you're doing. But the uh, and, and so we get all the other wives, girl. Mm, mm, who is she? What company does she work with? Where does she come from? Trust me, we know what you're up to. So I'm telling those of you who are in serious relationships, and yes, you need to binge watch that, uh, Miss Coleman, for sure. Both of them. Both of them. You will not. A woman scorn. Thank you. That's the first one. And then it's the second one. But listen. Yes. Meredith Baxter Bernie. Yes. So <clears throat> when she's in this group, remember, it's about power with her. So she's talking to the guys and they like her and so forth and so on. But please understand, <laughs> she's trying to pick out which one she can use and she will manipulate one man to get the next man to, to, to climb our way up to the top. Okay. Just so you know, so I'm gonna leave that right there. If you want more details, watch the first video, uh, that I did about this one. All right. Long suffering single mother. This one is the unlucky chick who is, she has some kids or had a kid and she just, she cannot seem to catch a break in life. It's always these emergencies with her and guess what your husband being the kind-hearted soft-hearted man that he is it starts out with him just giving her lunch money it starts out with him changing her tire it starts out with with him giving her a ride home because of course her little putt putt broke down it starts that way and see if she's really cunning she sees an open door. And if you're not handling business at home with him, or if he feels any kind of neglected, or if he's just one of them doggish men who just sees an opportunity to pounce, this is a problem for you. Because this woman may or may not want your husband. This is the thing. When she, eat, let's say he does leave you for this one, she doesn't really want to keep him. She just wants his, his resources. The best situation for her is to get his resources, his comfort, his protection, his money, and then send him back home with you. <laughs> she could care less about the sex, really. It's really about what can she get from him. And a lot of men, this is the point where men get kind of real stupid. They actually think that it's about sex with this one. This one could care less about sex with you, but she's going to make you think, oh my God, you're so big. Oh, you're so good. Ooh, oh, 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 and have this man's head blown all the way up. And because she makes him feel like a hero, he's all for it. This woman is cold blooded. So when he goes home to tell you it's over, I don't want you. She loves me. This one to come back. I didn't tell you to leave your wife. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I have these kids I got to raise. I don't even know what. Are you going to put me in a bigger house you put your wife in? Like, because otherwise I don't want you. She just wants to borrow your man. She doesn't want to keep him. And that's where the manipulation comes from. And that's when it's scary, y'all. But she knows how to tap into a man and she can pick up. She has like spidey senses. She can pick up when a man is needy. So if you send your husband to work horny, you've been warned. Uh, because these women are at his job, okay, because they have to work, right? And they come with a sob story. And here's the thing that men don't understand is that women who are truly, truly cunning, like really good at it, like professional, they will <laughs> they will come to work with a sob story. Look, I, I just, I can't, I, I, it's hard for me to concentrate today because my car won't start and I just... Do you know how to charge a battery? 
And then when you get out, then when he gets out of there uh, to, to check the car, she's good. She's good. She's like, well, I don't have a way to go get the battery. Can you take me? I just need. So then when you get, then when he takes her to the battery, to get the battery, she doesn't have enough money. So now your husband being the great guy that he is, because that's why he's with you, because you chose a good man. He goes, you know what? No problem. I got it. Right. I got it. And then he'll say, are you hungry? So he'll stop and get her a burger or something. So she's like, oh, find a fool, use a fool. So she's thinking, oh, he gave me this. It must must be more. So now she goes, you're such a wonderful man. Your wife is so lucky to have you. And when she says that, if your husband is not true to the game about you and that family, he is suckered in, baby. He is all, he's like, oh, this young hot chick. He's not looking at anything else. So yeah, it, it goes to work husband. And then the next thing you know, they're on top of the, uh, they're on top of the copier making copies if you know what i mean all right does that make sense <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness so let's talk about the top five here oh yeah she will always have car trouble uh i i, I have to leave work early to pick up the kids it's always a, listen ladies those of you who have single mother friends i'm i'm not judging it life is life but you need to watch how much involved he is with her. Anything that she needs can come from you because that's your friend. I said what I said. Anything you need from my husband, you can ask me. Hello. <laughs> Nobody should be on the phone with your husband asking him for anything, ladies. Well, I don't want to sound, what? forget sounding insecure. Do any of you play chess? I know I play chess. I play chess. The queen is the most valuable piece on the board besides the king. Of course, the king, get, you know, that's the game. But the queen is, oh man, she's all over the place. And if you've ever played chess with someone who's good, right? They know how to maneuver that queen to where you don't see her coming. Right. So like you're playing <laughs> and boom, check. You're like, I didn't even see that move. The queen is always two, three, four, five, six steps ahead because she's protecting the king. You look at it as she's protecting the man. No, she's protecting her family, her family, her bag, her man, her security. Right. This is her thing that she's secured. This is her family. This is her web, and this is a foreign object inside her web, okay? Right? She's getting ready to sting. And so that queen, when that queen come out from the back rank and start moving, you in trouble. You better find out a way to do a queen trade, or you better find out the way of immobilizing that queen, because once she's out and you don't know what you're doing, you're a finish. A seasoned player knows how to work that queen. And let me tell you, Stop Stop listening to whores tell you, oh, you insecure, why, whatever, whatever. When you get a producer, you want to hang on to them too. Now, I'm not saying wives shouldn't be stay competitive and stay beautiful and do what you need to do. I don't need to tell you that. You know you need to do what you need to do as a wife. But there are, our, our world, like I started out telling you before, our world has gotten really, really, really grimy. And this is where it's, I'm getting ready to snap some edges. Y'all ready? All right, let's get into it. Everybody on this side of Clubhouse, hit the link at the top because you definitely want to hear this one. This first one is going to blow some people out the water. I might be stepping on some toes with this one. The first one, and that was kind of mild, but this one right here, I know I'm going to lose some friends. But if you can hang, hit the link at the top and join us over here. All right, older women, the so-called rich aunties. All right, these are the ones that uh, when young women say, these older women aren't giving us the game. 
They aren't giving us information. This woman will step forward and say, hey, baby girl, I can help you, girl. You better use what you got to get what you need. It, he looking, you better get that money from him. This is the woman that'll come with the most disgusting advice for women. Their channels will blow up. Their Instagram will blow up. And women will love them because women will... She she taps into a young women's desire to be rebellious because they're already rebellious. And so she taps into that and she kind of gives you the freedom to kind of do whatever you want to do. Right. And she doesn't judge you. Right. And she's already living on the eclectic lifestyle. This is the woman that's probably, on you know, underground, you know, underground parties you know what i mean y'all underground stuff she's doing a little of this a little bit of that okay she's rebellious and she calls it free thinking and she encourages women to rebel against church against god against family against men any kind of rebellion against the establishment religion politics the country anything she, rebellion 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 is the name of the game. And you all know, for those of you Bible readers, the Bible says uh, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Not in this woman's book, because she doesn't read the Bible. She hates organized religion. She could be into the cults. I won't say that she's in the occult, but typically they are open to that. Crystals and all these other little abstract religions and things like that. So she's going to really... Uh, excuse a lot of behavior. This is the woman that you can come home drunk and she won't tell your mom that you got drunk. This is her. And then she'll say, well, next time, this is what you do. This is how you get away with it. That's her. Not only is she going to let you drink, but she's going to let you know how to do it and get away with it. Does that make sense? All right. She wants the princess treatment. Now, you know how I said the sugar baby wants the princess treatment? This one does too. She wants the princess treatment, except she's like a million years old. And no shade to older women that are looking fabulous. Look, if you're looking fabulous and you're out here passing out wisdom to these young women to help them succeed in life, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the women out here that are just all over like i was watching the golden bachelor and i'm looking at these beautiful women on top of tables twerking and these women are like 60 and 70 years old on top of tables twerking i'm like ill okay so it's like she is going to th this is the woman that is going to excuse every little debauch debaucherous thought you could think of she's like oh Oh, let me show you how to get away with it. Let me show you how to get this money. Let me show you how to get over on this man. Let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to do that, right? She is your Alexis Carrington. And she encourages your bad behavior under the guise of freedom. You need your freedom. You need freedom from men, freedom from church, freedom from parents, freedom from your job, freedom from marriage, freedom from motherhood, freedom, 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 freedom. freedom, freedom. What she doesn't tell you is she grows old, but not necessarily gracefully, because if she's not able to turn um, over a, 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 a leaf and and typically they won't because they're unrepentant, like they don't see any thing wrong with what they do. And they don't think that they're misleading you. They really think that they're helping you out. So any rule of thumb, ladies, anytime you you're asking someone to help you do something that is illegal, immoral or, or ethical and they're OK with it, that they're not good for you over over the long term, because that could flip and they can get somebody to do that to you. This woman, she's going to be great. She's going to be attractive. Men love her because she's open sexually. She is like Blanche Devereaux from Golden Girls on steroids. This, this woman could care less about what you're talking about. She has no check. She has no check, right? There is no stop for her, okay? She never gives wisdom about being wholesome and being a wife. That's never going to come from her. Um, she's always teaching or encouraging women to set traps for men. This is important. 
this is this is why she's so intriguing because women younger women and here's the trap this is the honey trap right here younger women are always looking for advice on how to capitalize off of their youthful uh privilege and they're pretty privileged because there's youth privilege and then there's pretty privilege right and so they're always looking for ways to get by on that right and so uh <laughs> this woman is always encouraging women to set traps and she will even give you traps to set for men she won't tell you about the time that she got slapped in the head to the white meat when she got caught stealing from a man or lying to a man she won't tell you about the time she had to sleep in her car she won't tell you about the time she had to turn some tricks she won't tell you about the time she had to kneel in front of a bunch of men and do some favors y'all feel me she's not going to tell you that she's always going to tell you that her lifestyle is great she won't tell you what she had to do for that first stall. she will never tell you that she'll just say hey i just have a lot of jewelry and men just give me stuff and then she will never tell you she got beat with a wire hanger by a man who was sadistic she'll never tell you about the time she was trapped and they took advantage of her she will never ever ever in a million years tell you that but she'll just tell you about all the uh jewelry she's got all the all the all of the little trappings and trinkets that she received she'll never tell you about how twisted her mind is and how she went to therapy but she couldn't continue going because it was just too painful bringing up all those memories from her past she won't tell you about the sicknesses that she's had and how how unhappy she is yes Yes, they will always, I, I, if you ever listen to people like this, they never, ever, ever express unhappiness about their way of life. They always have to sell it like their way of life. Even in my way of life, I tell you the pros and the cons. I don't say, oh, just being a housewife is just perfect and there's never no downsides and there's never any downsides to marriage. That would make me a liar and a hypocrite. I'm going to tell you, there are some upsides and some downsides. It's mostly up, but there are some downs. You have to understand the downs, right? This woman will never, ever, 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 ever tell you that she's had some downs. Um, let's see. She describes herself as a free thinker. She regret. Uh, she rejects rules and feels marriage is restrictive. She doesn't have that many boundaries, which is why she will date a uh, uh, an eighteen year old boy or eighty one year old man. You're liable to see her with any one of them <laughs> at any time. Okay, she she has no boundaries. Um, she's always going to critique wholesome women. I always look real side eye at women who critique wholesome. Women. You are critiquing a woman that wants to pray, a woman that wants to go to church, a woman that wants to be married. <coughs> Excuse me, a woman that wants to have a family. She is always has her mouth on people. <coughs> Excuse me, women who live completely different from her. She always has something negative to say about the nicest, or I don't know, not we'll say the nicest people, but people that choose a different path than her. What she perceives as goody two shoes or going along with the program. She's always really stressing to you about you've been programmed to think this way. You're living your life for other people, live your life for you. This is the one that would totally sleep with her husband and not think twice about it. <laughs> and God bless the man that actually thinks this woman loves him back because she does not. This is like an older version of a sugar baby. Like she is just never gotten out of that mindset. And so nobody can tell her that she's 77. Nobody can tell her that she's 55. Nobody can tell her anything. As far as she's concerned, she's 23, flat stomach and no kids. So you can tell her all of that stuff, but no, she's still fly in her mind. And she is fly. She's very, a lot of these women are very, very attractive, very appealing. And, and they are very personable and to know on a very personal level. But you have to really be careful because when you start opening up about your desires, if they're not on, on, on the same page with her, she's going to tear you down. All right. She praises the occult and abstract religions. And she's very open with her sexuality. She might be with women. She might be with men. She might be with younger men. She might be with older men. She's all over the place. By this time, now, she didn't start out this way. First, she started out, you know, a certain group, and then it expanded to interracial. Then it expanded to women. Then it went to all kinds of stuff. This woman is all 
over the place. And to think about this one, and then we'll go to the next one. Ladies, info is everywhere. Just about anything you want to know about is either in a book or online or somebody has a channel talking about it or anything like this. So this woman has a little bit of information. Maybe she read a book. Maybe she watched a YouTube channel, a documentary, or she looked it up on ChatGPT. I don't know. This woman sounds so knowledgeable about whatever she, and if you're not, if you're not careful, you'll fall in her little honey trap thinking that this woman is so wise. You better double check anything this woman says. Well, Nicole, how do I know she wants my husband? She doesn't want him. <laughs> she doesn't want him. She loves power. This is sugar baby on steroids. Older ones anyway. Old steroids. This is a woman that does not want your man. She just wants the power that she feels she still got it. I can still get him. And then when, you know, he gets sassy and want to leave home or he gets sloppy because this woman is going to turn him out because she's she's got some old tricks up her, you know, she's an old pony with some you know, some new tricks. OK, and so he's going to be like, oh, my God, she did X, Y and Z. She sucked it upside down. I've never had a woman do this. And why you don't do that? <laughs> it's going to come on. Look at you like what? She's. 89 years old and she did uh, okay and so you're like okay whatever she's gonna go i never told you to leave your wife you need to go back to your wife now she's gonna talk smack to you see i told you these men ain't no good they all cheat i was married before and all he did was cheat on me i was with my child's father all they did was cheat and that's when she'll go in on you but then with him she'll i didn't tell you to leave your wife you need to go home to her that's how this woman gets down on it. Ugh, the younger woman, she's forever in high school. This girl never, ever, ever grows up. It's just, you can give her the game. You can literally write it down on a piece of paper. This is what you do. A, B, C, D, E. Do it just like this. And she will still mess it up because she hates the truth. This is the woman that either clicked on this video and clicked off because she doesn't want to hear the truth. She, I don't know what it is with this younger generation, but they hate the truth with, uh, uh, they're listening to witches. They're listening to uh, folk, women that don't even like uh, men trying to get some wisdom. It's like going to, it's like going to a homeless shelter trying to get medical care. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's not the place you go for medical care. You go to people who are trained to help you, but you can't tell these women nothing. This is the level up community, hypergamous community, luxury community, sugar baby community. All of these women, all, all of them, uh, whatever. If you're part of this community, I'm sorry. I told you I was snatching edges. It is what it is. If you're in this community and that's not you, get out right this second there is no happy ending here because they teach you to hate truth they teach you to hate people who give you truth they they teach you to hate people that tell you the truth and love people that lie to you okay it's like life is one continuous party with this women with these women and as long as your man can give him the princess treatment they don't, they don't want your man. They just want to poo-poo in your face. Look at you. See, I still got your man. You sitting up here talking about being wholesome. You're talking about being a wife. And I still had your man sniffing up my butt. Now, this goes to men out here who actually fall for this crap. As much as this is all over the YouTube, all over social media, that how these women get down, and you still fall for them, that's because this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted to do, poo-poo on you, and hopefully she cleans out every single thing in divorce court. You get what you have coming to you. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear your funky little YouTube channel about women getting alimony and child support. She needs more than that because she only gets that if you're broke. She needs the, the vineyard. She needs the house in Martha's Vineyard. She needs everything because everybody's been telling, even the men are telling you, even the men are telling married men to avoid these women. 
So I don't, to me, I don't want to hear about, oh, she trapped me. I don't want to hear that anymore. I don't want to hear about, she gave me a, ba- I, I gave her a baby. It was an accident. I really, I don't care. You're not a child. You're grown. And you purposely, intentionally, intentionally got involved with this woman. All, even the men, and I have my critique of the manosphere, and I have my critique of red pill and the lot of them, but they are they are telling you to avoid these women. They, even them, even though they secretly want to be with them too. That's not the point. They, they, st- they still are telling you to avoid these women. And then a married man, a married man that still involves himself with this kind of woman. I, I honestly, I hope she cleans you out. Honestly, I do. I'm telling you, I hope she cleans you out. And if she emails me, Nicole, what should I do? I'm going to tell you, this is what you do. This kind of lawyer you get. Oh, what state you in? Okay. Let me find out how to get this man's money because we keep telling you, we keep telling you to leave these women alone and you won't do it. And if I find out that you cheating on my girls, oh, send me an email. That's all. Let's set this dude up. Let's get his money. Not set him up like to hurt him. No, no, set him up legally to go to court and win him fair and square. Not let me let me clear that up. Let's get his money the right way through legally because this is not right. We keep telling you to leave these women alone and you won't do it. Right? These women don't want marriage, and you think that oh. Uh, she loves me and she pleases me better than my wife. You stupid fool. All right. These women don't want you. And the fact that you're married, you are, you're a, a whole husband, spit up, spit up stains on your t-shirts. You know, you have uh, uh, dirt spots on your jeans for working in the yard. You actually think that that's attractive to her you riding around the yard in the tractor and planning birthday parties for the little kids you you think you think she likes that you actually think she wants to keep you come on come on bro come on man you actually think that come on come on right these younger women that are forever in high school baby they will sleep with your man in a heartbeat. Oh, you have a relationship. You think it's here. Oh, let me let me prove to you that he's a dog. Just because you said he's good, let me try him. Let me take a photo at your home to prove to you that he's a dog. Oh, that's how they get down, honey. Mm-hmm. They turn a deaf ear to the truth. They're promiscuous, ready to have fun and throw caution to the wind. Uh, they love any man with money, single, married, crippled, blind. As long as he has some money, he is fair game. Wife or no, fair game. I'm telling you. (laughs) Um, these are the women that are super, super critical of married women. Remember, let me see. Okay, let me give you a good example. If you are ever in certain channels or certain spaces and you hear women going in on the wife, how she looks, how she dress, how she talks, never speaking to the man, always prejudging the wife, that's a woman that would totally be on her knees for your man. I'm just telling you, um, you've been warned. Stay away from women that are always critical of wives. You know why? Because when you want to be a wife, why would you criticize wives if you really want to be a wife? Because that's the crowd you want to be in. It's like insulting a country club and then saying you want to be a part of it. Like, that's stupid. Who does that? Psychotic people do stuff like that. So I always pay attention to women, how they speak about marriage. Marriage isn't the be all the end all. Like if you get married, that's cool, but it's not the be all the end all. Girl, if you don't stay away from me, we cannot be friends. I, I, I cannot be friends with someone who does not respect marriage because if you don't respect marriage, as soon as you get my husband by himself, my friend's husband by himself, it doesn't matter. As soon as you get a married man by himself, you, you already said you freestyle. So it's nothing to you. It's nothing to you. You've already expressed that marriage is just a piece of paper. And I always pay attention to women like that. Always. I I, I don't even like spiritual marriages. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Because we don't have a spiritual marriage. It's legal, baby. 
The people want to jump over here. It's legal. Oh, no, 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 honey. The state of Georgia recognizes my marriage, honey. What? Okay, I don't do spiritual marriages. And you shouldn't either, by the way. But I, that's another conversation. But women who are just, we just want to be spiritually married and stuff like that. Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Uh, you're pro-polygamy, polyamorous, all that other foolishness. Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. You trying to recruit my husband to take you as a second wife? Excuse me? You must not want your age. <laughs> you must not want to see 2024. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't let me bring this Scorpio out on you. Okay? I'm just saying, ladies. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janesta, for the super sticker. Appreciate it. But ladies, no, 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 no. Um, they have issues with men. It could have been daddy, could have been brother. Some kind of way uh, there was a breakdown in how she views men. And so she carries that on in her relationship. She really does not believe in the goodness of men. She does not believe that men have a kind heart or have good intentions. So she conducts herself in life that way. This one right here is going to be another one. But um, the last point about younger women is when you try to help them, they still don't want to listen. But then they'll turn around and claim the older women didn't tell them anything. Everybody on this page right here and all of the younger women that fall in these categories, they will claim they will be up in somebody's face whether it's in a few weeks, a few days, a few months, a few years, and they will say, this is why I'm doing these videos now. I want it on record because they will say older women didn't tell them this. So I want it on record. I don't care if I only have 500 views on this video. I still want it on record. It's not my fault you didn't find the video. I did my job, okay? And I'm telling you, <laughs> the truth and they will say all oh, women didn't older women didn't tell us anything they're jealous of us they they're jealous they don't want us to have fun and all of that stupid crap when i said years ago that a lot of mothers let their daughters down i didn't mean that for you all to take that as carte blanche as a way to come out here and be city girls forever that wasn't what that was for that was to explain why explain why some women have difficulty connecting with their feminine energy because they have mother scars mother wounds and so they are naturally competitive with women because they have a wounded relationship with mother and that's why i said a lot of women cannot embrace their feminine side because of mother that wasn't an excuse for you to go out here and be city girl all day every day forever grow up single relationship gurus these are your man whispers so i know i'm going to lose some friends up and through here but hey it's got to be said i want it on record because i know when some people's spots get blown up they'll say when well, nicole didn't say anything she didn't say anything Single relationship gurus. Now, for the record, I'm including male single relationship gurus in this as well. And I'm also including married <laughs> married relationship gurus in this because you have some women whisperers that are naturally just good with women. And so they use, um, they use, their abilities and understanding of women to manipulate women into their spaces so they can just kind of knock the women off just kind of cherry pick which women they want to mess with you all didn't know that hopefully you know that that when you go into a lot of these male spaces a lot of them a lot of them give a lot of good advice a lot of understanding but always 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 keep a open perspective when you're listening to male relationship gurus because it's like, okay, if you understand women so well, where is your wife? You should be taking care of her. And then he'll come up with some lame reason why he's not married. And the married ones you have to be careful of because, ladies, if your husband is a relationship guru, you have to be careful, right? Because a lot of women 
and and not because they're trying to get with your husband or the relationship guru himself. It's not necessarily that. Sometimes they're just inboxing just because they're they're curious. Like I get random e inboxes every single day, and I don't look at them maliciously. I just kind of answer the question, things like that. But uh, when you are in relationship sphere and you're giving people advice and you're making content and things like that, people reach out to you. When you are a male content creator, you're going to get women to reach out to you. And if you're in a relationship space, you're dealing with women who are on the spectrum of how they feel about themselves, how they feel about relationships, you know. And so they are looking for your husband, who's the relationship guru, to kind of be their therapist and understand, explain away what's going on with them. And a lot of it is innocent, but sometimes it's not. Okay. Um, and a lot of women who go to these male relationship gurus are still single to this day because the goal was never to help you get married. The goal was never to help you date. The goal was to see if they could get in your draws. Yeah. I told you I'm going to lose some friends. Single relationship gurus, the women, on the other hand, this woman is dangerous because you don't see her coming. You would never, ever, ever in a million years think that this woman would have the big cojones to sleep with a married man. But they will do it because she has an above average understanding of men. Right. She she can sniff out a desperate man, hungry man, horny man. She can sniff him out. And she has an understanding of men that is above average in the regular woman out here. Right. So she's probably, you know, when she gives advice, it's like aha moments. You're like, woo, that was woo, that was profound. So you would never think in a million years why she would do this with a married man she's like no 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 and i'm gonna tell you why remember when i said women reach out to male gurus all right well males reach out to relationship gurus nicole how do you know this because when i was on facebook i'm still on facebook but um when i was on my personal page i've gotten thousands and i'm not even lying and i have a small platform so you can imagine women with big platforms i got messages from me and probably i don't know several times a week and i'm slow i don't always get to the messages and sometimes i knew they were flirting like they were you know i wish my wife was like you oh no uh uh, -uh. Uh, uh we're not starting that sir i wish my wife was like you you need to start you need to talk to my wife excuse me <laughs> I would just leave it on. I would just leave it on red. I just wouldn't even respond because I'm like, that is of the devil. I already know where he's going with this because all I need to do is send him up. What do you mean? And he's like, well, she's not like you, like you're feminine and da, 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 da. And then because I'm so ego starved, I'll go, oh, oh, really? <laughs> and the next thing you know, they're called so-called air quote friends. And then the next thing you know, well, I happen to be in your city next week. We should meet up for drinks. Uh-huh. Is your wife coming? Of course not. But she has an understanding of men. And so these men will reach out to her. And sometimes it's innocent. I honestly, honestly, married men in single women's inboxes, I don't see any reason for that whatsoever ever i don't that's like me going into phineas's inbox and just what's up phineas what's up what's going on what's going on you know what i mean like that's just not i don't that's no i think that's inappropriate i'm sorry i'm i'm I, that's inappropriate because what how some person may take the text to mean something else so i would never i would never uh do something that i would hate for my husband to do right that's how i look at it i'm not going to do anything that i wouldn't want him to do and if you want 
this house to look like a wild animal ran through it with the furniture ripped out, its feathers flying everywhere, the dishes are broke, the window, the 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 paintings hanging off the the walls and the Christmas tree knocked over. If you want this house to look like tornado went through it, let me feel like <laughs> you know how Scorpio women are. Do don't okay. <laughs> I'm not into the zodiac, but there are some personality things about us sometimes that are it's on point. And for our listen, Phineas, Phineas is like, what? Listen, you want to do me wrong? This house will not look the same when you return. How you remember it? <laughs> No, seriously, I don't know how women handle that. But that's how I handle it. Oh, okay. You didn't want this sofa, did you? Snatch, sneak, like that's. I'm just talking, y'all. But you understand what I'm saying? That I won't do anything that I wouldn't want my spouse to do. And some people don't think like that, and so they can't even imagine their husband reaching out to somebody, a professional in her inbox. But ladies. I'm just going to be honest with you. If our inboxes could talk, if any woman who does relationship anything, if 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 she wanted to put her inbox on blast, and that includes me and anybody else, uh, if she want if if these relationship good good rules put their inboxes on blast, baby, uh, most of their messages will be for married men. I'm not I'm not even going to lie to you. So, uh, yeah, I'm not lying to you. I'm not lying to you. So I'm not saying it's all on her, but I am saying <laughs> that she has something that appeals to them. And if she's attractive, which most relationship gurus are, she already has her little fanboys, her little followers. Right. And so they just slide in her DMs. And honestly, I don't think a lot of relationship gurus well, let me know. They know what they're doing because they are man whispers. They know. They know exactly what they're doing. They are very in tune with these guys when they send that message. And when you ask them, why aren't you married? What's going on? They'll say, well, I can't get married if I want to. I, you know, they don't really prioritize marriage unless it's a man that she can flaunt in front of the public. If it's someone that she can say, hi, I married this rich man. You need to take my advice or hi, I married this good looking man. And if, if it's not a man like that, they don't want them. They don't want them. They're looking for like, as my husband says, nerd hunters. So if anybody else uses this term, like taxing relationship, taxing, shout out to my husband, give my husband credit. When you use this content, you know who you are. Nerd hunters. Uh, <laughs> that's for my husband. Um, they're looking for nerds. They're looking for men that are a little bit, um, uh, what's the word? not as experienced with women, or at least they feel are not as experienced with women. So they're a little nerdy, a little socially awkward. And this is why they'll hang around the manosphere in red pill spaces. Have you ever been to a channel that's run by a man and it's only like five women with a million men? It's the same, it's the same. It's the same energy. What they're doing is looking for nerds. They're looking for men that are so thirsty. Oh, you're so fine. Ooh, ooh, I wish I had a woman like you. Boom, find a fool, use a fool. Okay, so this woman is going to have lots of male friends. If you ever hear a woman, a woman saying, I have a lot of male friends, and then she slips up and makes the mistake of telling you some of them are married. If a woman, listen, ladies, let me tell you something, okay? Any woman that sits up and tells you they have phone conversations with married men, you need to cut that hoe off immediately. And I said what I said. I am snatching your whole edges. If she's up here telling you that it, he's not a cousin, he's not a, a father, a uncle or something, I mean, like, you have a legitimate reason to be on the phone with him. I'm talking about this is her friend, and she's just chilling on the phone with him? And he's married. Um, you need to cut that hoe off. I said what I said. Because you know what's happening on that conversation? I wish my wife was like you. You're so easy to talk to. You don't believe me? Find out for yourself. They have a lot of followers and they have a lot of fanboys that tell them they're so beautiful and sexy and things like that. 
And a lot of these fanboys and followers don't really mean anything. They just like looking at her. They're like, you know, she's entertainment. They are entertainment. <laughs> and, um, and they love that. They love that. They love that. And they love the princess treatment. No matter what kind of relationship advice they're giving, they actually want to be treated like princesses, not queens, princesses. They love to imitate wholesome women. Ladies, let me tell you something. I don't care if the last time you went to church was 1982 Easter. Mark my words. Any woman that mocks women that go to church mocks women that pray, uh, knocks women that love God, that mocks women that want to be married, leave that hole where you found her, block and delete your phone number. I'm telling you, I don't care if you never went to church. I don't care if you like, you haven't been to church since 1979 Christmas. I don't care. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It is a, it's an, um, it's an integrity thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's 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 saying to a woman, I'm mocking you for being a great example for your daughters and your sons. Lead it hoe where you found her. <laughs> she is always mocking women who love God. That is the weirdest thing to me. How do you mock somebody that prays? Make that make sense to me. Are you a witch? Like, how do you get down? You cast some spells? Like, oh, that's weird to me. But that'll be the first woman in your husband's DMs, talking to him on the phone. And see, in her mind, what she'll tell herself is this is innocent. I'm just helping him out. You don't need to help my husband do nothing. Ladies that are married, you that are of fiancés, you listening to me in this recording, Years from now, I don't care how many years from now, I'm telling you, if she's having phone conversations with married men and she actually has the ego to brag about having male friends that she's on the phone with, leave that hoe alone, block and delete. She is not your friend. She is probably talking to your husband. And you say, well, Nicole, he has to blame too. He absolutely is. He's a dog with fleas. But that doesn't mean we have to, as my husband will say, test the streets. <laughs> you don't have to go in the lion's den. Phineas said, I'm not wrong. The fellas are agreeing with me. I'm telling you, these relationship gurus, I'm telling you, ladies, listen, you do business with them. Keep your man away from them. Keep them out of your business. Let me tell you something else, ladies. You do not discuss your man with single women. Let me say that again. I need to put that on a t-shirt, a tweet. You do not. I don't care if she's a relationship guru. I don't care. I don't care. You do not discuss your relationship information with a uh, with a, a relationship, a guru that's single. I don't care how, how many followers she has. I don't care. She knows the president. I don't care. You're, you're, there's some things that should be sacred and that should be a marriage. Because let me tell you, if you ever get around, if your husband ever gets around this woman, this woman is, this woman is magnetic. This woman is magnetic, okay? And you think she's safe because who would have the audacity to mess with a married man. Like you are in front of the public. You're talking to women about relationships. Girl, please. <laughs> I'm telling you. They are the quintessential nerd hunters. They know men very, very well. They go to these spots where they're dragging women and they go in. Yes, I love to cook in my t-shirt. I don't wear a bra around the house. I just walk around in heels. I mean, they go in there, go in there telling me what they want to hear. I mean, they do the most, okay? They go in there telling me and what, what and, and the men go, oh, let me, let me, you know, and then they start flirting and they're like, oh, find a fool, use a fool, got one. <laughs> and that's why they go into these male dominated spaces so they can extract the dummies out of the crowd. And it's, they're easy to spot because they're very contradictory. 
there's your clue, fellas. I just told you. You can catch them in contradictions as much as I don't know what. <laughs> much as your president. <laughs> uh, you can catch them in all kinds of contradictions. It does, just, just listen to them long enough. And you'll, you'll, I mean, either they're lying about their past, they're lying about their present, they're lying about their marriages, they're lying about the, they're always lying about something. And you, if you just listen to them long enough, they'll lie. They'll catch themselves. They will reinvent themselves. They will reinvent them pat their past. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've had people steal whole platforms from me. Just, just everything. Just <laughs> the messages. The vi I mean, they've stolen everything but my, but my icon, but my, but my, but my brand and and my logo. They've stolen my content. They stole child listen trying to rebrand themselves i'm telling you fellas just open your eyes it's right in front of you just open your eyes you have no one to blame no one to blame uh because what they're trying to do what these women are trying to do that i'm talking about today is they're trying to emulate women of substance okay and they need a way to emulate women of substance. So they're going to come to spaces like this. They're going to extract what they need. And then they're going to go back and imitate what they hear and what they see. And if men are not smart enough to listen and catch them in contradictory statements, which they will do because liars always contradict themselves, then pooey on you, you get what you get. <laughs> but these women had traumatic backgrounds. They had troubled childhoods. They have issues with men underneath. And this is why they feel they need to finesse rather than just be good women. This is why they feel they need to imitate good women instead of being good women. All right. I think I'm doing good. That's a lot of content to cover. Well, I'm almost done. Church helper. This is the forever church girl. I told you I was going to pull edges. This one right here. This one right here. It's heartbreaking because she doesn't start out like a homewrecker. Like she doesn't like purposely go after married men. I don't think. And maybe that's just me and how I feel. I just don't think she starts out this way. But somehow God didn't bless her with a husband in time. And so she's around all of these good looking men in suits and, you know, and she's young and she's attractive. Sometimes they're not, you know, she's attractive and God didn't bless her with a husband fast enough. She's gone to the relationship gurus, male and female. She's prayed. She's, I mean, she's celibate. I mean, she's done everything. And she's like, God, why am I still single? And a lot of times, ladies, if this is you uh, that I'm describing, hear about the, you know, God isn't blessing you long enough. Sometimes it's something real simple that a mentor could, to, could point out. So don't think it's just you overall. Sometimes it's just something really minor and it could just be fixed. It could be tweaked. And I know this for a fact because it used to be me. A divorcee in church. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I'm doing what you told me to do. It's Friday night and I got my Bible and Netflix and where is he? You probably <laughs> I've been her, y'all. I've been her. So I understand. I'm not judging. Um, and I'm just telling you to hang in there. And then when I I got a coach, I got a coach, coach. And she told me I got a male coach and a female coach. Uh, because I didn't need a mentor. I got a coach and a and a male female coach, and they said the same thing, and I fixed it and boom, you know, but some women just don't reach out for help and then they stay single forever and they think it's God and they think it's church and they listen to these grimy, evil, wicked people tell them it's because of church and it's because of God and it's because of the Bible. Sometimes it's real simple as you talk too much. Sometimes it's real simple as close your legs. Sometimes it's something super, super, super simple, like you're argumentative or something. And like it's super, super, super simple. That's like a mentor because like really take you to it right then and there you fix it right all right so but nevertheless she doesn't get a mentor she's still in the church she's doing everything like she's the go-to you need sister so-and-so to read the scripture you need sister so-and-so to clean the bathroom you need sister so-and-so to do the type of the program she's always there uh in a clutch for the church wherever they need she's very she seems very holy and wholesome 
And I mean, you try to get this woman to cold switch and she will not cold switch. Like if you ever go out to dinner with her or things like she's very good at masquerading. Okay. She's very good at making sure you don't see her with her hair down. Now she has her crew that she's going to be more relaxed with, but you won't see that side of her because she doesn't want you to see that side of her. Typically these women um, that I'm speaking of right here that, or have a, you know, uh, that might entertain being with a married man had rough upbringings. And so now they cling to the church because this is the one place where they can get redemption wholesale and they don't they're not always walking around with this cloud over their head people don't see the former hoe they don't see the single mother they don't see the the woman that did drugs or they don't see that they see a beautiful christian woman who loves god that's what they see and she loves that and she should get that because jesus is a redeemer and he lives so she finds her solace in church and so she's clinging to that the problem is whatever she's asking God for doesn't come fast enough in her time. And so she, she's because she's attractive and because you have a lot of pariahs in the church, I say what I say it. They see her as an opportunity the same way a guy walking in the club will see a woman, on, you know, dancing on the dance floor. They it's the same energy, the same approach, the same thing and like, oh. It's an opportunity to get some, right? And she's in the church and she won't tell anybody because she has something to lose. She has a reputation to uphold. So, you know, guys kind of prey on these church girls. And let me tell you something. If you are a church, if you if you see yourself in anything that I'm describing, be careful of these guys because a lot of guys, they think that uh, you're not freaky and that they can do certain things with you sexually, get you turned out. And that feeds their ego because that gives them power, right? So you want to be careful not to let them in. Keep those pretty legs closed because some of the worst dogs, baby, have been in the church. Let me tell you, because women don't expect that they would have the big cojones to actually do this in church. <laughs> they don't think that people are this grimy, but they are. This lady is going to befriend the first lady or anybody in power, but particularly the, particularly the first lady, some women in the church actually have an ego big enough that they believe that they're better than the first lady. They're better than leadership. Some, some, not all of them, but some, they do believe. And so you want to watch out. If you are a first lady, you're listening to this, pass this to your first lady. I'm pretty sure she already knows. <laughs> especially if she's over 50 um this woman keep praying because she's uh, yes him oh god yes him this woman is going to go out of her way to befriend the first lady and if she's not careful she wants to get in the close sphere of the man of god okay i said what i said and a lot of them won't revenge on the hot girls <clears throat> they feel like the city girls get all the attention here i am reading the bible i go to bible study i love the lord i dress modestly you know i could be an ig model but i'm not right and the guys still leave the church and go get with the hot girls in the streets so she kind of wants revenge on them because you ratchet you city girl you whore you get the men and i don't so she kind of wants revenge on them except she's taking it out on the people in the church and her dating life if you've ever seen a really really attractive woman that's single in the church nobody knows who she's dating <laughs> it's always a big secret it's a reason for that a lot of times they're they're messing with married men. I'm just telling you. I'm sorry. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but a lot of times, a lot of times, they are messing with married men in and out of the church. Sometimes he's not even in the church. As a matter of fact, that's safer for her to mess with him out of the church. And this is why you hear a lot of men go real speaking with their whole chest, talking about how freaky church girls are. This is the girl he's talking about. Girls, church girls are so freaky. Uh, they talking all that. They love God. Yeah, whatever. I had her. I was slapping them cheeks the other night. This is the girl he's talking about. 
And then people are like, you are so beautiful. Why aren't you single? You should let the first lady help you find a husband. And she's like, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm okay. This is the one he's talking about. This is the one that men on the streets are talking about when they say church girls are freaky. This is the one they're talking about. And she kind of gets suckered in. I want suckered in the word I want to use. Let me just leave it open. She gets involved with a married man intentionally. Well, I don't, I don't know. But whatever the case may be, she knows he's married. And she goes full-fledged in. And what she tells herself is, well, you know, this has just tied me over till I meet the one. I know what I'm doing. I'll repent. And this has tied me over till I meet the one. And what happens is she starts doing the most. And if she's not careful, she gets exposed. But the real professional ones like this, you'll never, 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 never know how she got down. She ends up being the church mother years later. <laughs> uh, and people respect, I mean, you know, people respect her. I mean, she, you know, but she, she, she gets it in. She gets it in majorly. She cozies up to the first lady to get in her inner circle. So you want to be careful about these little, these women, these random women. Oh, Miss First Lady, I can help you. I told you about my grandfather. He was a college professor and a pastor later in life. And it was con and as my grandfather ascended into the hierarchy within the church, and he worked alongside the bishop. Um, um, my grandmother, her her role in the church expanded as well. And you'd be surprised uh, towards like the last ten years when they they really reached the pinnacle of their church success, I guess. Um, and they're very very busy, right? It, the house was constantly. Every time I went to Texas to visit them, the, the house was just always filled. I won't say filled, but it was always some random woman coming over to help my grandmother. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was, it was always some random. Oh, this is such a so-and-so from Dallas. She drove all the way from Dallas to help me. And I'm like, huh? Okay. <laughs> she, she, okay. All right. Even though there's people here in this, you know, in this area that can, okay, all right. This is such a sister so and so from such and such. She's gonna ride, and I can drive for you. I can drive for you. And they would call my grandmother mother. They were, we, I'll drive for you. You don't have to. And my grandmother did not have to lift a finger up to her dying day. She did not have to lift a finger because, thank God, there was always people around her, even after my grandfather passed. There was always people, these women around. And I'm not trying to be funny, but I think when my grandfather passed away, these women kind of got low too. They didn't really come around a lot after that, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. If my family is listening to this, check me on that. But I, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of fell back after my grandfather died. So I'm just saying, but it seems, like, it seems like when he was alive and he was right up under the bishop, it seemed like my grandmother has so many women around her i'm just saying so ladies if you're first lady if you're thinking about being a first lady just always watch your back with these random women oh first lady i can carry a purse oh first lady i can send you those emails be careful about giving them your emails uh your passwords your purse access the bank accounts just be careful with these women I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Now, my grandmother did not have any issues because my grandmother was very, very, very smart. I mean, a lot of stuff that uh, I discussed with you all, my grandmother gave me in one lesson or another. Very, very wise woman. So she was a woman of teachers. Uh, she was a teacher of women as well. So I kind of inherited it from her and my mother and my auntie. But um Listen, my, my grandmother was wise. And when I tell you she did not trust these young, uh, I won't call them hoes, but she, 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 she uh, vetted them well and they had to be related to somebody or a friend or uh, uh, related to one of her close friends in order to work with her. You couldn't just come up in her house and have access to everything. No. And they never were with my grandfather by himself. Let me tell you something. 
My grandmother with her little short self would not let eat. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> you you all need to pay attention to how these older women move. I'm telling you. All right, unhappily married women, listen. If any woman on this list is the worst, this is the one. Unhappily married women. How do you discover these women, Nicole? Easy. They're married, but they have negativity. Just nothing but negative things to say about marriage. Stay away from her. Block and delete that all right now. Right now. Well, Nicole, that's my cousin. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> but listen, keep her away from your husband. Unhappily married women are the worst. Why? Because nobody expects them to do what they do. They get away with murder. They're disloyal to their husband. So that tells you everything you need to know about this woman. And when she cheats, she cheats with her whole chest because she feels justified. Maybe he cheated on her. Maybe, you know, uh, I don't know. They're having some marital discourse. This woman uh, convinces herself that she's doing the right thing. Right. So when you confront her, cuss her out, send her a threatening email, she's like, I I don't uh, what I've been I've been destroyed by my husband. I don't know why you're sending me this email. I I've prayed in my I mean, she will go all into victim mode. So th don't even bother. Don't even bother with this one. Uh, I mean, you can try to save your marriage after this one because she doesn't want your husband. And even if he left you for this one, the marriage will work out because this is her character, right? This is a woman of bad character. And always be careful of married women who come from families where nobody's happily married or nobody's married. You if she comes from a family where she's the only one married. She's not going to get support to keep that marriage together. And this is a word, a wise word to you fellas and women out there. Surround yourself with people that are married and those fellas choosing a wife. You might listen to this on a rebroadcast. Always pay, pay attention to that pedigree. She comes from pedigree. Nobody's married. She needs, she's going to need support from married women. She needs to be around married women. Otherwise, I'm not talking about happily married women. Not a bunch of women talking about how they can get away covering each other. I'm talking about that because we do have clubs like that who major in providing, um, it's their own Facebook, actually. They actually give each other alibis. <laughs> okay, it's deep. It's deep with these. These women are masters at it, okay? And... <clears throat> If she comes from a family where nobody's married, she's not going to get support. When she goes to them and say and says that I'm having issues within my marriage, I don't know what's going on. I love my husband. I want to save my marriage. This is before she cheats. Um, they're going to go, what? I don't even know why you married him anyway. Uh, they're not going to see the value in her saving the marriage, which fuels whatever grime she's about to partake in. She wants good sex, not a divorce. A lot of times, married women just want their backs broke for whatever reason. Maybe it's the kids. Maybe he cheated. A lot of times, they just want some good sex, right? They just want to unleash their sexiness. There is this sentiment out here that married men want to cheat with a real freaky, dirty woman because they don't want to dirty their wife up. That can be flipped as well. Yes, Phineas. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, honey. Talk about it. Talk about it, Phineas. Um, you think that it's just the husband that wants freaky sex and he doesn't want to dirty his wife up. There are women out there that are, they were very, very promiscuous and open sexually before they got married. And then when they get married, they have to harness this because they have to keep up that good girl facade. This is the other part of finessing, by the way. She finessed herself in a marriage. And I'm not saying all unhappily married men that women cheat are like this, but there are some women who um, finesse their way into a marriage. They pretended to be a good girl. You know, they copy off of women like you and me. They copy off of us. They finagle uh, a dummy into marrying them. Well, I won't say he's a dummy. Well, yeah, I will, because 
okay, he should know better. It's all over YouTube. How these women are finessing now. Come on. Um, and so you marry, she marries the dummy. And then after a baby or two, or after whenever she's the, the, the boredom starts to kick in. Like there's some women that play the long game. They can do this. Like, you know, the, the woman that you mentioned from Chicago, that's marrying the Chicago star son. She played the long game. She didn't quit him right away. So people didn't pick up on the finesse. Then there's other people who've been married a long time and they wait till the kids reach a certain age. Then all of a sudden they're unhappy and that. Okay. That's the finesse too. Okay. So um, there's women that do that, but then there's some women, they just cannot keep up the facade because they need that BBC. They need that cop, whatever you want to call it. They got to have it. And they are tired of playing Susie Homemaker. They are tired of keeping up this facade. And they, yes, her. Yes. And they are sick and tired of fixing this man's food and cleaning this man's house. They want to get out back out in the streets, honey. And so what they do is they guise it up under good sex, but then it ends up leading to a little bit much more. This woman is could possibly work with your husband. She could be a combination of all of these women on here. She could be a feminist Miss Andrews. There are some men that are married to feminist Miss Andrews. Bless their hearts, honey. Um, there are some men that are married to sugar babies. There's some men that are married to the refugee, uh, but she's unhappy. She's She was unhappy when she met you, and she was unhappy when she said, I do, but she was the dumb fool that married her, so now you're stuck. And, and here's the thing about unhappily married women. Their husband loves their dirty draws. <laughs> he is, it's always, I, I had to take on two extra jobs to make sure she had. It's always something stupid like that. When I watch these little crime shows and then they find out that the wife killed the husband or killed somebody or cheated, it's always, and he was a hard working. And then the family and the friends come out and the community. We don't know anyone that had hard feelings for Tommy. I don't know what, why? And then they find out that the wife was an old finesse. This happens all the time. Matter of fact, if those of you who read the Bible, uh, Delilah, anyone? <laughs> this has been happening since the beginning of time. Okay, finessing. And so, and I'm giving you variations of the unhappily married woman. It's not always these scenarios, but it's kind of nuanced. But, but, it's variations of this woman. This is why she's so dangerous because she's Susie homemaker by day, but put her on the computer or her cell phone or, you know, let her go out. Oh, I'm going over my best friend's house to do X, Y, and Z. And she's over riding somebody's, you know, carousel. Hey, but, and this is the cold part about this woman. This is, this is the part that's cold. She cheats with married men, which is the best situation because he has something to lose too. So she feels like he's not going to blow up her spot because he's married too. Shout out to Phineas. Thank you so much for the super chat. Listening while driving for the tip jar. We'll comment later and pass this along. Great program. Thank you so much, Phineas. It's good to see you back, back over here with the family. <laughs> she says, little do these unhappily married women know that they could invest that time and energy into their own marriages and feel more intimate and fulfilled than ever. That's absolutely correct. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that, Lacey. They want to be for the streets. And here's the thing about a lot of these women who do this with their whole chest. A lot of them never really got married mentally. Uh, they just married for the resources, the protection, the provision. And this is the other side of finessing. This is what happens when a finesser gets married. I'm going to tell you what she's doing. She's going to tip out. She can't, she can't keep up the facade too long. She's itching. Her little panties are itching, honey. She cannot wait. It, it's, it, and it's not, it's not always the man because we assume when she cheats is because her husband cheat. That's one way. But a lot of, I mean, again, the unhappily married woman is very, very nuanced. Very, very nuanced. All right. So I'm going to give you some bonuses before we get to the type of women that are at the top of the list that women go for. Uh, the ex-wife. Watch out for the ex-wife. This is a bonus. I had to throw this one on here. Let me tell you something. That first wife is special to that man. 
I'm going to tell you something, and you better remember this for the rest of your days. That first wife is very special to that man. Okay? Very special to that man, especially if she was the mother of his children. I'm a divorcee. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> I have a special place in his heart. And that's why people keep away from me because they think, oh, she going to want, no, baby, that 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 ship has sailed. But that's, that's her being the queen over her dominion. So I'm not mad at that at all. You just better be good to my kids. I'm going to have your head on a platter. But, um, but hey, she's the queen over her dominion. That's it. Because I would do the same. Listen, heifer, your time is past. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, Listen, I know that first wife is special, especially if she had children by him. This is the woman that he came off the market for. So this is the woman that he had children with. Uh, listen, that first wife is special. And she has a special place in his heart. Uh, any of his ex-wives, to be honest with you, any of his ex-wives. To be honest with you, shout out to Adam Clayton Powell Jr. I had his son on the platform talking about the great Hazel Scott, right? And, you know, he was talking about his father's first wife. I think he went more in detail with my husband. My husband interviewed me, him. And, but he has a special place in his heart for Hazel, which is his second wife, which is Skipper's daddy. I mean, Skipper's mama. So, you know, it's just husbands and ex-wives let me tell you something keep that woman away <laughs> i know that because if they have children and they're co-parenting i know it can get difficult so i'm not saying start a fight with her and make things difficult please don't don't do that that's not what i'm saying i'm just telling you that ex-wife if especially here's the key especially if she initiated if she initiated y'all e e Yikes. If she initiated, that means he probably wasn't ready to engage in a divorce yet. And so it was unresolved issues there. Now, I mean, time could pass and he can get over it. So I'm not saying this is forever and amen. But if that divorce is less than five years, uh, you really, 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 really need to check with family, friends, community, and pray hard and make sure that he's over her. And see, and watch how he reacts. Does he go into the other room when she calls? Is he always defending her? I mean, I could do a whole show about that, but I, I, I'm going to digress on that. Um, especially if they have a good to extra good relationship, like they're like best friends and stuff like that. Be, be, be very, very careful about that kind of stuff. Uh, you would rarely suspect that he's running around with his ex-wife. That's not something people, we always think it's somebody younger or another man, or we think it's somebody at the workplace, which is, I mean, that's logical. But that ex-wife, she has an excuse to be in his presence. They have an understanding of each other. She remembers him touching her, having sex. I mean, they are the closest two human beings could be. They had children together. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying she has a hold on him. And if she divorced him first, she may regret losing him and he may regret losing her. Cause sometimes it's, she regrets him re losing him, but then sometimes it's he regrets losing her. Now he loves you. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes that itch need to be scratched. I just need to know that I could get her back. I need to have her approval. She left me. Have you ever, ever, ever had someone dump you? And then it's always this unsettled business in your heart, your soul. Like, I need to know. Why did you leave me? Be careful. Be careful. And watch how he talks about her. Is it always, I hate, I hate, I hate her? That means he's still emotionally involved. And uh, he says he hates her, Nicole. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. A, a lot of these ex-wives, uh, her, you know, the last relationship that she's in didn't work out. So now she wants to circle back to her ex-husband. Uh, over the years, my ex-husband and I tried to reconcile about three or four times. So I know what I'm talking about. 
clothes. <laughs> like and the, the last time we were like, okay, we are good and broke up. Well, I wish you best. Uh, you know, we'll take care of the kids. That's our first and foremost. I wish you the best. And we are we're friends right now. And we just went on our way. I don't even consider us friends. I think we're just really cordial and really, you know, I mean, our kids. I mean, we had children together. I mean, but in terms of like being in love, no, we let that go years ago, right? So I know what I'm talking about, ladies. Trust me. Sometimes these ex-wives will orbit back. Sometimes he'll orbit back or she'll orbit back. And they will do this for years. <laughs> they, they will do this for years. I'm telling you, ladies, I'm please, I'm, I'm saying this to help you out. Uh, um, some, you know, and, and so when you come on the scene, uh, you know, you don't have to be mean to her. Just keep your eyes open, eyes and ears, and just watch. Just watch, right? And then a lot of times, the ex-wife misses the status and the convenience of being with him. Sometimes she just misses the, the being Mrs. So and So. She misses the status that she got with. We talked about that with the megastar's mother. How she was married to hit her father, and then. Uh, they got a divorce, but she still holds on to his name. And then she goes and marries another actor who's prominent. I mean, for those of us that are over 40, we know who he is. She goes and marries him. You can put, put him in the chat if you know who I'm talking about. She goes and marries him, but she keeps her married name from this megastar's father. You know what I'm saying? Like, she is kind of, she's telling on herself that she misses the megastar's father. Do you understand what I'm saying, ladies? This is very, very telling. Like, ex-wives always tell on themselves, especially, yes, that's exactly who I'm talking about. Ex-wives always tell on themselves about their ex-husbands if she still has feelings for them. Look at the top left here. Uh, <laughs> this one right here, if she could get her ex back, she would in a heartbeat. Anybody that he messes with, she is going to orbit her way because they have children together. She's going to always orbit around Mr. Murphy. I don't care what he does. She's going to always orbit. Ladies, you better be careful about those exes. And listen, the family and the children more often than not want to see them reconcile. They want to see them. They want to see mommy and daddy get back together. And so that fuels them. That gives them the, you know, the okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. And then it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's hard to let go. I mean, you two had a soul tie. You had a family. I've been there. I've done that. I know what I'm talking about. And that's why I took years off to heal and get over that and forgive him, forgive myself. Um, because sometimes you need to heal yourself from a divorce. And sometimes um, women don't take the time to kind of pause and clear their cash after a divorce. They just go right into smack dab into another relationship. I'm not a fan of that. I think women need at least, whew, at least two or three years to kind of detox personally. That's just as an expert, I think that's what needs to happen. All right. The other bonus one, here's one that, that might uh, uh, throw you off a little bit, but divorced women, divorced women are another one. They're just as bad as the unhappily married woman. Divorced women are kind of worse than the unhappily married one. Well, actually, no, she's not. They're about the same. The divorced woman is, she will cheat with her whole chat because she doesn't feel like she's cheating. She feels like, well, my husband cheated on me. I can cheat. You know what I mean? She wants to be desired because she went through a bad divorce. She's single. She's lonely. She knows men. She knows how to get a man to pursue her, to get her. Like she has the edge over a lot of women that are just plain single because she's been married. And this woman pulls no punches. If she wants your man, She's getting your man. I'm, I'm just, these divorced women are, whoo. And if she's divorced and like a, a feminist misandrist or she's divorced and she's a sugar baby or she's divorced and she's a, a relationship guru, baby, uh, don't, don't put them around your, I'm just telling you, <laughs> this woman is looking for an ego plug wherever she can get it. So I'm just telling you, don't let your husband be the one that she's, you know, 
playing with and her seat filler and, you know, paying bills at her house and all. Divorced women really know how to really get at married men because they're divorced and nobody sees it coming because they think she's, you know, she's divorced. And they just they just underestimate this woman. But always pay attention to divorced women who are constantly talking bad about relationships, constantly talking bad about men, constantly dragging women that are married. Like, why would you drag a wife? Didn't you used to be a wife? She's all marriage isn't the be all and end all. I get married when I feel like it. Marriage is a prison. Marriage is oppressive. Any anytime she's talking anything about ne anything negative about marriage, keep her away from your man. Whether she's divorced, single, married, I don't care. If she's talking negatively about marriage, she will not respect yours. That's just common sense. <laughs> just I'm, I always pay attention to how a woman is. Girl, you hoe. Get off my phone. Goodbye. God bless you. Let peace be unto you. Go head on about your business. We cannot be friends. We can be cordial. Associates, hey, how you doing? God bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy Easter. After that, we, look, you on your own. We cannot rock. How can two walk together unless they agree? We can't. Goodbye. Uh, but she's used to being married. She knows how to relate to men. Sometimes she gets home. She gets lonely. She's horny. She's hurt from the divorce. And sometimes she's just not ready to marry right then and there but your husband is there he's in he's right there <laughs> conveniently right there and they work together uh she comes in the office real hot and sexy because she knows how to get a man and of course all the fellas are <laughs> oh she look good today and you know that's all she needs to hear and she can pick up because she used to be a wife she could pick up on when a man is unhappy and god forbid she's a relationship guru and she's divorced. <sighs> Remember, <laughs> that used to be me, y'all. And I got married because I knew. I knew, I knew, I knew. So I'm telling you, ladies, uh, listen, being a relationship guru and being divorced is not a flex. It's not. I've been there. I've done that. It's not a flex. All right. And the last one is his children, his family, and his career. This is non-romantic. But they too can be your home records. His children can constantly get in your hair. Children from other relationships. You're just like, oh, they don't respect your relationship. You know, they don't, you know, it listen. Um, and it's they he has a a non-romantic attachment, and they're his children. But sometimes a lot of men can't walk and chew gum at the same time, like be a father and then maintain a marriage at the same time like they couldn't do it with their actual mother so it's really really hard to do it with a, a, another woman and so it's really really hard so ladies you have to watch out for the children especially those of you marrying older men his children looking at you like uh-huh you go digger you just want my daddy for money okay all right seriously go get you a hot dog get out of my face just like what are you talking about that's what i'm talking about that can be a wedge um, or it's just simply, well, you know, my dad is still in love with my mom. What? Come on, bruh. Come on, sis. Come on. Grow up. Grow up. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, they don't want their father to move on. And they, uh, you know, or your husband is extra ambitious and extra workaholic. Now, for some of you, that's a little nuanced because if he's on the come up and he's trying to you know, find his way in, uh, you know, uh, corporate business wise, and he's trying to accomplish some things, you're going to have some years where you're going to have to be extra graceful with him because he's working a lot. But after a certain point, he should pull back and, sh you know, even on anniversaries and birthdays and, you know, holidays and he needs to make time for you. I don't care. He needs to make time for you. You know, can't be working forever, forever, forever. And then he doesn't make time for you. No. All right. So last but not least, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. I want to give you the list, like I promised, of the women that me, uh, that these women, homewreckers, actually look at you and go, I'm going to take you, man. Y'all ready? I thought I had my glasses over here. I guess I don't. All right. Y'all ready? Oh, there we go. All right. Women who are at risk 
to be a target. Women who have healthy views on men. If you actually like men, <laughs> uh, women look at you weird because they come from trauma. They come from heartache, their backgrounds, you know, their daddies were MIA. So they're looking at you like, why on earth do you like these creatures? Why do you like men so much? They're looking at you like, oh, I can't wait for her husband to cheat. I can't wait to get at her husband. Oh, yes, baby. They cannot wait. Women who speak truth about the world, commentators like me, Candace Owens, uh, uh, shoot, anybody, anybody who speaks truth about the world, they're coming for your man. Just know man, you better hope he keeps it in his pants because if he doesn't, they're going to, oh, 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 her husband, look at her sitting up there talking about men and all that. Look at her husband. He a dog, just like everybody, because that's what whores do. They they want to mess and, mess and ruin with a relationship. I'm talking about women who intentionally do this, who like purposely go after women, target women. They're looking at you like, mm -hmm, you talking all that smack on the mic. Let me get your husband alone. He's mine. Oh, she's talking all that smack about being engaged and her husband, her, her man bought her this. Let me be, let him be along with me two minutes. All I need is two minutes and he's mine. And all he has to do is cut a look at her because men look, all right? He's not blind. And he looks and she, uh-huh. I know he won't me because he looked at me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know she marrying a dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like uh, some of these celebrities that have gotten married recently, a lot of people are jealous of them and things like that. I see what well, I see the comment section. A lot of these women are, can't wait to cheat with that man. If he they talking bad about him, oh, he doesn't have money, he's not rich, he's clown. They say all of these negative things about her husband, but I guarantee you, if they were ever with that man five minutes alone. She would try to get him to cheat. And if he even gives an inkling that he will want to cheat, she's going to social media. She's blowing it up. Just like back here where I showed you this couple here. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find a page. Pick this one. Just like she went to social media to blow, or I don't know if she went to it, but the pictures were out there. Why did you take the picture with them? I mean, you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about. They purposely want to blow up your spot. They want to take pictures at the house. They want to, I'm going to tell your wife, all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, fellas, keep it in your pants because if your wife <laughs> is in the public eye, she's a target. And they are looking. It's not about you, fellas. You think it's always about you. Sometimes it's about to get back with her. She thinks she all that. She thinks she cute. I'm cuter than her. Why did he choose her? I'm going to show her these men ain't nothing. Especially the ones on the mic talking about men don't love, men don't love, men are from other planets and all this kind of stuff. Those would be the first ones on your hunt. Mm. All right. Um, women who brag about home life, marriage, and being happy. If you ever posted, I love my husband, I made my husband dinner, my husband took me out, I love my, anything to say is, that says you love your husband, beware, I don't care, Miss Nicole, you're off, no I'm not. There are some unrepentant, angry, grimy, wicked women out there who are waiting at a chance to get at your man. <laughs> As soon as they can on it. I'm almost done. It's almost four o'clock, y'all. All right. Um, if you're married to a desirable man, if he's famous, if he's rich, if he's good looking, beware. Beware. Yeah. Yes. Yes. His wife gets it all the time. Listen, beware. You know who you marry. You know you married the man at the top. At the top. So you already know. So get ready for it. Don't get in the corner whining. Don't nag him all the time. Every time he come home, you you know, you're jumping down his throat, accusing him of stuff. No, you know who you married. You know you married the top. So get ready for that. And, and don't always accuse him because sometimes it's not him. Sometimes these women are flat out grimy. Sometimes it is him. Sometimes it's, it's, they're just flat out grimy. Um, 
women married to rich men you already know what it is all these finessers out here baby it's not enough rich men to go around i'm gonna tell you that i don't care if you're white black hispanic whatever i don't care what corner of the globe you come from it's not enough rich men to go around so what are they doing they're stacking the blocks on top of each other basically oh so you found a provider let me slide they're trying to sh they're trying to shortcut since they don't have the skills to pull their own man, what they want to do is get yours. So, oh, you found a provider. Oh, he paying all your bills. Oh, because that's what they see. They don't see that you are a wife and a companion. And you love. They don't see that part. They just see that he's paying bills because this is how they move. So, uh, oh, you found a provider. Let me slip up. And then it'll come as they're trying to be friends with you. But then they'll sneak in. Oh, well, how's your husband? And this girl, oh, get off my phone. Goodbye. <laughs> no goodbye <laughs> he's fine goodbye uh uh women married to men who risk their marriage for whores if your husband has the propensity to cheat if he cheated will you all date it uh you know he has opportunity like if he's a celebrity or a politician or a any man that's around a lot of women all the time there's chances of slip ups. So you either get it in your mind of what you're going to do when this happens or uh, just know, but you can't fight every woman that's around them and you can't accuse them all the time of cheating. Just be a queen and just pay attention to the board. That's all I'm telling you to do. I'm not trying to feed in the insecurities. I'm just telling you from a wise woman, my experiences and experiences from people I know, and i'm telling you uh <laughs> just pay attention these women are gloves off right now which i'm going to talk about next week when i talk about the return of the courtesan and the kept woman because that this this is kind of a precursor to that and so i'm going to make it a series because courtesans and kept women are going to now come out of the dark now they're going to flat out tell you i'm charging by the hour that's coming and so they feel like they're not doing anything by sleeping with your husband who's stupid enough to pay her. Now, if your husband is stupid enough to pay a prostitute, because that's what they are, if he's stupid enough to do that, then, I mean, I, 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 I don't know, counseling, I don't know, I don't know. That's on you. I'm not going to tell you to divorce. I don't tell people to divorce. I just tell you, you know, I'm here to support you. However, um, cause I, I never, you know, you never get the full details of, of couples anyway, unless you're a couples therapist, they never really give you the full skinny, right? So that's why I never diagnose marriages as over. I just don't, right? I just say, oh, well, the other person quit trying to help, quit working on it. Okay. Well, I don't, I mean, there's nowhere else we can go with that. Right. <laughs> um, but ladies, uh, if he's out here doing the most, your women are going to come for him because it's slim pickings out here. The men are closing their pockets. The men are listening to social media. They're listening to these hookup channels, these level up channels, these hypergamy channels. And women, I, I told y'all years ago, that's not even smart. That comes from lack of wisdom to just be putting everything on social media. But hey, you did it. And so now the men are like, oh, so that's how you get down. And so then we talked about Cheesecake Factory. For those of you listening to the replay years from now, this was the Cheesecake Factory girl. She, you know, wasn't happy with the restaurant and said she was too good to go to Cheesecake. Listen. <laughs> The fellas are like, you know what? You were tripping about the coffee day, but that's exactly what you're going to get on a good day. I'm done taking you you hoes on dates. And that's what the men are saying. I don't know what you think they're saying, but they're saying I'm with. So the hoes are coming to places like this, trying to copy our style. Like people that I came to YouTube and they used to like low key diss me in their videos. And I actually liked their content. I was like, why do you hate me? I don't bother. My channel is like super small. Like it's like a, a, a small percentage compared to your channel, but you sneak dissing. I, I, that was weird to me. And now they're adopting some of the phrases I use, some of the titles I use. And I find it very amusing. That lets me know that they're getting desperate. A lot of these hoes are getting flat out desperate. They need to 
figure out how do these good girls get down? How are they sealing the deal? Because these dudes, you you don't understand these men, ladies, are are they are smarter than you give them credit for, some of them. Uh, but a lot of them are not really smart, but they are listening. They are listening and they are saying, you know what? I'm afraid of being used. So I tell you what, I won't go out at all. <laughs> I won't go out at all. And so now what's happening is what I'm going to explain to you next week is some women are going to just come all the way out of the closet and just say, this is how much a date with me cost. We're getting there. Now it will fail. This whole system will fail. And then people will rush back to marriage is such a good thing. Why didn't we get married? I mean, they're going to, they're going to do that, but it's gotta, it's gotta fall. And this is not just one race, baby. It isn't just black folks. It's white folks. It's Latino. Do you watch you TikTok anybody? Have you seen those videos? Okay. So we're in that, this age, this end day where women are just going to flat out it's past Isaiah 4 and 1. We're at the day when women are going to flat out be like, it costs this to be with me. And so a lot of these hypergamy places and level up places are going to come to little channels like mine. And there's other little channels like mine that they're going to come and they're going to steal and extract phrases from us and some of our content. And they're going to pass it off to them for that world. I'm, I'm going to talk about that next week. Um, high profile women, if you're famous, if you're high profile, they're going to sleep with your husband for clout. Okay. So just get ready for it. They're going to try. So whoever you choose to marry, uh, please let him know that, <laughs> look, the, the women are going to be gunning for me. Don't be so naive to think that there's the sisterhood that's going to actually protect your protect your marriage. Girl, please. If you don't if you don't get your head out of the clouds. Clout chasing and blackmail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're rich, this is why wealthy people don't discuss their money because of stuff like this, but you will have women who who go after your husband, especially you sitting there bragging, oh, we got on our private jet and we, he, he just took me on a, you know, a spur of the moment vacation to France. And he spent all, I mean, you do that on social media, which is absolutely so dumb, but people do what they do. And, and then now you have all these people uh, envious of you <laughs> and they will masquerade and see women, grimy women are good because they will masquerade it as friendship. Always, always, always look at a woman sideways when she's best buds with you and then stop talking to you at the drop of a dime. She's a grimy hoe. And I said what I said with my whole soul. Any woman that gets close to you and then like stops talking to you, I've learned the hard way. This isn't the first time. This, this happened to me several times where people get close to me and then stop talking to me. I've summed it up that they're just grimy. And anybody that messes with them are grimy. So, ladies, this will happen to you as good women. Because you're good, you're going to attract all kinds of people because everybody likes the light. Except grimy people who like the dark. But they like to be around the light. They like what attract what's attracted to the light. They just don't like being the light. But they like what attract what's attracted to the light. And you're the light. And so they will copy you. They will imitate you. They will take your phrases. Like they say, provider. We're looking for a provider. That's nothing but whole talk. Now, we, when we say provider, we say we want a traditional husband. We don't say, we don't want, I want a traditional man. No, I want a husband. That's the difference. Provider this, luxury that. And then they had the audacity to put scripture on it. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> 409 dude thank you so much i appreciate that good show good show i thank you i'm so late it's, it's a lot of stuff to cover i know this was a long it seems like it was so long but it was only two hours but listen ladies i'm you, you ask for advice i'm telling you you ask for wisdom from older women i'm telling you just just you're a queen all right you're not princesses you are queens and queens watch the board and the king represents your home. 
And baby, I watch. I watch. I listen. I don't always let people know I'm watching and listening, but I'm watching. And I let go of hoes and men who talk crazy. <laughs> uh, men who, you know, listen, borderline inappropriate. Got to cut it off. Listen. Right. Uh, it, professional conversations is the only conversations we need to be having. Anything outside of that is dangerous. Ladies, you have to set the tone for him and you. Not only do you negotiate household duties and who pays what, you also need to negotiate your boundaries and within the marriage. OK, you need to be doing that before the wedding, <laughs> before you say, uh, before you book the venue. Thank you so much for the uh, cash app. I appreciate that, baby. Uh, uh, Marcus, thank you so much. I Listen, before you book the venue, because once you book the venue, that's a no, that's no going back after that. <laughs> My venue was crazy. Listen, so before you book the venue, okay, <laughs> um, make sure we understand we don't get emails from other women unless you want her to die. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Lord, forgive me. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> we don't get emails and calls from other women. You do not text Brother Tony. You don't want to live, do you? You don't text my husband. So we get to understand it. It's like, I'm not going to uh, be texting other men. Do you, do you understand what I, where I'm going with this, ladies? It's mutual respect. You set the boundary and we go forth. I should go on IG today. Not today. Not today. This is my birthday uh, month. And so I'm just kind of enjoying the time, you know what? When I go live, just make sure you follow me and hit the the uh, notify always, so that when I go live on IG, you're ready. Like I went live on Saturday, and so just jump, you know, jump in. And some of you all, I want y'all to join the live with me. I don't want to just talk to myself. <laughs> but um, next week, though, next week is going to get rough. That's going to be <sighs> courtesans. And kept women. That just came to me today as I was preparing this. I was like, that is a conversation we need to have because a lot of this is it's going to get rough up and through here. And my business coach um, told us in our group, uh, he told us that the economy is going to get really, 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 really bad, as in depression bad. And so that got my wheels to turn in. Thank you, baby. Um, that got my wheels to turn in, uh, that women are going to, it's going to be slim pickings out here and they're going to be, you know, rushing, trying to lock a man down. And these men are not going to budge. Once that, once that economy tanks, ladies, if you don't have your hooks in a man by the end, uh, you might have to wait it out. Just like I told them during the pandemic, if you don't have them, your hooks in a man <laughs> already, uh, or you just don't have, if you don't have these extraordinary skills, you're stuck. And so, if the if the economy tanks, like they're saying, and we're and and my coach has millions upon millions of dollars, like that's my goal. Like he's millions and millions and millions of dollars. So this man is in the stratosphere in terms of money, um, and he's predicting that it's going to be bad, ladies. I'm telling you. You got. You have to prepare to be a wife. You cannot listen to these women that tell you you have forever. Because I'm looking at the way YouTube is moving. Um, it's going to get to the point where we they might charge us to post a video. We're getting there, and so you can't just rely on stuff you've been relying on. And that's what I'm saying. You need to have a backup plan. And for those of you who are not going to get married. I don't know why you'd be listening to my channel, but for those of you who don't plan to get married, do you have a backup plan? <laughs> Ladies, for those of you who go to these, these spaces and you listen to some of those things um, that they're saying, hold on, some of those things that you're saying and they, and they talk bad about marriage, ask them, so what's your backup plan for not being married since you're such an expert? What's your backup plan? Because a lot of these jobs are acting funny. I'm just saying, I, I don't, you know, some people are not, didn't live, they weren't in the job market in 2008, but I was. 
And uh, it was ugly. I was in Atlanta during 2008. The, and let me tell you, it was ugly. Bree said, do you inform your husband if you've identified once, the, once the, uh, one of these women? I have not been, um, um, had been faced with this situation yet, but we did set the tone and uh, that there's a mutual respect. I'm not going to email men or call and so forth and so forth and so forth and so on. So it's, it's an obvious breach <laughs> if either one of us does that. Um, we made it very, very clear. And Tony and I, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, like, it's just like, why? Why do that? Like, we're good. You know what I mean? It's like, why? But, you know, does that answer your question? So, but now if I do see a situation, I've had, um, well, I won't say that. I will say that there are women that like how my husband speaks. He's, he's colorful and things like that. So I don't get offended because they, there was one, there was one a, a, a while ago. And I, we, we, this was when we were dating, uh, before we even got serious. And I was like, so, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you and this person he was like oh no 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 I was like well because me you can't be if you and her and it was very clear so I was like well let's make a distinction uh, <laughs> and I think that's when he knew I was into him I was like I don't I don't share so so, it, you know, you can you, say it in a nice way, like in the choir, what's up with you and her? What's the, you know, because you're coming in and meeting him. And so you don't know what kind of rapport they have. But he was very honest and very up forth with and gave me details. And I was still jealous, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but he assured me that there was nothing going on and it wasn't. So, I mean, but that's just me. I'm very territorial, territorial. Uh, my man, just like you are of your husband or man or and whatever. And so I asked and, and I was comfortable with his, his answer. So that comes with trust and knowing your man and knowing your situation. Right. And, no, and knowing, but some of you all, your man like to push the envelope. And so that's something you're going to have to deal with him about ladies. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you ladies joining me today make sure you want to join a league of elite women i know this off-brand groups popping up elite this and elite that we're the original feminine elite we've been around for quite some time we have our own app where it's nothing but women and we do talk about men we talk about everything i don't even want it to come off like we girl on girl no we talk about men we talk about relationships we talk about uh marrying well we talk about gardening marriage <laughs> homemaking cooking baking the bible affirmation all of that which gala to go to this weekend especially if you're in houston if you're in Houston, there, uh, not Houston, I want to say New Orleans. I just sent an announcement this past Saturday. There's a uh, an event going on in New Orleans this weekend, and it's not public. It's not like out in a, where everybody can uh, access the information. But I got a hold of it, y'all. And if you're in New Orleans, you definitely that's the kind of stuff that I let you all know about, so that you all can go. And and I also prepare you for that because some people can tell you where to go, but they can't tell you how to uh, be because they don't go. So. Um, with that being said, keep in touch with us. Don't lose us. And we definitely want to hear from you next week when we talk about courtesans and kept women. And I definitely want to hear uh, your thoughts on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with me another two and a half hours. I appreciate you all. And have a good weekend. Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody. Peace out.